what's going on world this is your girl marky love and and today i am joined by i, I want to say my road dog is what i might want to call it because uh, we see each other out on the road none other than the j man i met him at rapid years ago how many years has it been i want to say it was like 2014 so 2014 five years we're celebrating our five-year anniversary. Oh, bring it in. Oh. Bring it in. Ah. <laughs> virtual and, hug. Virtual hug. Um, and what I love about J-Man, besides the fact he's way younger than I am, um, his energy, uh, the fact that he loves social media technology with an emphasis on video, uh, the fact that he utilizes it in his business every single day, and he also happens to be a speaker. Oh, wait, J-Man, but he's substantially more athletic than I could ever be, right? Uh, he has more, <laughs> he, he's more athletic in his pinky <laughs> finger, right, than I am in my entire body. What's going on, J-Man? How are you? Great to have you, you know, see you today. It's wonderful Monday. It is Just a listen. great Monday. Um, and you're I in New it. York, right? I am in New York, Rochester, New York. So it's upstate between Syracuse and Buffalo. Um, we're not New York City. We're about 371 miles northwest of New York City. Uh, this is where I was born and raised, Rochester, New York, the rock, we call it. Born and raised. Okay, so we share that in common because I'm born and raised right here on the south side of Chicago. Uh, I've had 48 years here on the south side of Chicago. And even if I moved, I would keep a place on the south side of Chicago. Uh, and so, uh, we, look, we ride or die loyal, huh? That's right. That's right. I love well, where I live. I love where I live, too, especially because of family. Uh, and I know that we also share something else. We both have two sons. That's right. I got yeah. two boys, three and eight. Yours are already leaving the nest. Mine are still in the nest. Yeah. You know, keeping me keeping me on my toes. <laughs> I'm not going to say they leave. And uh, he's coming home. Uh, he'll be home on the 27th. And so I'll be seeing him <laughs> real soon. <laughs> Well, you know, we talk a lot about social selling and we talk a lot about video. And I know that you've had some, uh, you've had great response to your video content. But let's say that I'm brand spanking new to the business. You know, I, I just moved to, I just got my license in New York. I live in your neighborhood. I even want to be your competitor. Because see, I know we share, we don't care if you are competitive. We still going to tell you the right thing to do. Right. What's the first thing you're going to tell me to do? First thing I'll tell you is go live. <laughs> Take your phone. It, it, and, and I think it's just, we are our own biggest obstacles. We always talk about this, that it's like, oh, you know what? I'm brand new in the business. What, what can I talk about? Talk about you because that's who they're hiring. It's who you are as a person. It's not necessarily who you are as an agent because we all have this life experience that we bring to the transaction before we were in real estate. And that's truly what matters to the client and, and demonstrating that you care, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah, you said go live. And here's the thing, going live should be free. I mean, I have an unlimited cell phone plan. Uh, I have my mobile device with me. I can go live any place. Uh, and even if by chance I could just capture a great moment and couldn't go live, I still have that great moment later. The ideal thing, of course, is to go live. And so you said talk about you. Do you have any secrets? <laughs> is it something uh, you haven't told us on Facebook? No, I don't think so. You know, I, I'm just, I'm just real. I keep it real. I share everything about me. And, 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 and that can be scary because it, it puts you in a vulnerable place, right? Like you're exposing the world to the real you. And I think that's everybody's biggest fear is not being accepted, right? Like I'm going to expose you to me. Will you love me? You know, and, and you have to get to a place where you're like, I love me. So that's all that matters. I'm going to put it out there who I am what my core beliefs are. And if you want to do business with me, if we align, then, then that's going to work. If not, I'm okay with it. You know what? Even though we, we, we don't live in the same marketplace, a lot of things that I know about you, I do know from video. So when we're at work, we're not just instantly rolling our children into every single program, right? Or one child might get highlighted more than another contingent upon what we're speaking about. But right. one of my favorite videos of yours it does not it's not even of you it is your son riding his big wheel and the big wheel <laughs> kind of turns over to the side and i want to say he might have had on his underwear and it was raining outside 
Yeah. That was the absolute cutest thing. But I think the fact, uh, and I'm not going to get the competition right. You're an Iron Man. What, what do you, uh, what do you Spartan. mean? Spartan. Say it again. Spartan. It's obstacle course racing. That's what I so, do. I would have never known in a million years at work that you were that physically fit, that you were one that intense and that dedicated to your body because you're putting a suit on it, right? And you're not coming into work with a, a tight suit with the little narrow pants rolled up, right? You wear a, a, a suit that kind of hangs. And so I wouldn't have never had any idea. So through video, I'm finding other ways to connect with you, children, family, the fact that if I had a, wait, think about this. We were with David Knox, right? And what did he want you to do? Show him how to properly do squats. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he was like, Jay. Oh wait, wait. You're in the fitness. Tell me, tell me. How can I do? How can I? How, what's the right way to do? And then lunges right after that. I was like, I want to get, I want to get my my. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, all right. I could, I could teach you. But I want these plants. <laughs> Pants to split real quick. You want the plant pants to split. So I'm going to go live. What? So I'm going live, and I'm letting people get to know me. What are some of your uh, video tips and tricks? <sighs> Let's see. Video tips and tricks. I, I think you want to have a plan going in. I never have a script, you know, and then I did a live stream yesterday, and this was a question that came up. You know, it may work depending on your personality type. If you want a storyboard, what you're going to talk about, you know, and, and it depends on the type of live stream. If it's just me talking about me, that's the simplest topic because you should know yourself. But if it's you talking about real estate, if it's you inter interviewing a local business owner or something, you have to have a plan ahead of time, but also an appointment. Hopefully you're not just going to walk into somebody's business and go, Hey, we're going live everybody. Right. So have a plan, talk to the business owner. I give them questions ahead of time that I might ask so that they could be prepared because uh, your job is not only to highlight the business, if it's an interview like that, mm -hmm. highlight the business, but you want the person to be able to talk intelligently on video. You want to make them look good. You know, that, that's part of, you know, if you think about what reporters do in the news every day, um, if it's that kind of a story, they want the people they're interviewing to sound intelligent and, and do a good job. One thing that you just pointed out, um, I don't have a script. I just write five bullet points if I know that it's I'm going to be long winded uh, because one, it keeps me focused on the subject because sometimes we can, I can definitely go off subject. So I write down my five bullet points for those yeah. mo more detailed, but you said, uh, and people don't think about this, set an appointment, right? And you want to make the person look good and be like a reporter. I joke with realtors every single day, but they are officially they're broadcasters because right. they have video access. They have live. They can be on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, right? All of them have live platforms built into them right now. And so thinking like a reporter, it is to highlight and make the community look good. But set that appointment up and have those those five questions. So I have my, my I'm, I could be scripted, unscripted. I'm going to set appointments. When you think of your most successful three videos, okay, uh -huh. uh, tell me w one thing, well, three things total that you think made those videos successful. Okay, the first, locally owned business. Number two, finding the cause behind the business. Hmm. Right? And then three, why should they care? You know, is, is it, is it something, I mean, not just, not the business owner, but the person watching it, why should they care about this business and why should they frequent it? You know, what's their takeaway? And so when I think about one of the, just recently I did one about a, a coffee shop, right? You can get a good cup of coffee anywhere, decent, you know, decent enough cup of coffee. And this place within 50, yeah, as you, I'm looking at that Starbucks you got going on there, but as you this business within 30 feet from them was a Starbucks that opened up. Okay. And so this is a locally owned, they took like a little, you know, small house and they made it into a coffee shop slash music. Like they do music lessons and stuff like that. And so I, I felt it was my responsibility. Like this is a locally owned business. This is somebody who lives their business is a mile from my home. And I want them to stay in business because small business is what builds our communities. It's not these big corporate monsters that come in and they're oh good we got a great opportunity we can steal business from this you know the, the mom and pop and so 
the cause behind that. Help me help this business owner be successful. And then I interviewed them and she just gave me just from the heart, like why they opened the business, what it means to her, you know, they, they, they're just the cause behind the business really made the difference in people watching it. And then she actually, I, I didn't ask this ahead of time, but another kind of tip and trick, she incentivized anybody who shared the video. They gave, she gave them a free cup of coffee. Really? Okay. Which when you want to talk about a coffee shop, like cost of goods sold, that might be a five cent cup of coffee, but the perceived value is high. And so just anybody who shared it, people were sharing it just because they cared about the business and the owner. Um, but Hey, free cup of coffee. And if you've never been there, you can go there and, and really experience it. So I so, think those are the things that make the difference. I haven't focused a lot on the local businesses. I focused a lot on real estate related businesses and you're making me appreciate my local businesses. And generally I'm interviewing a person because I find them to be, um, they provide knowledge and information and they're pretty gregarious on camera. But if you can get them to tell a story behind finding the cause and why people should care, you hooking them. I mean, like right. th th that's the hook and with the incentive. So now guess what? I am going to have to focus on local videos and not just real estate related, like the lender, the home inspector business. But we just went to a new ice cream shop that just opened and uh, I favorite. realized, well, guess what we're doing? We're actually doing an ice cream social there because what I realized is people do not take ice cream to go to eat. They tend to stay and eat it because if they try to eat it and drive, they're subject to spill it or by the time they get home, it'll melt. So right. what I've realized, anytime we've offered ice cream, we get more people to stay and conversate. Oh, yeah. And so, and so yeah. we want to have that conversation, right? Is conversate a word? I got to go look that up because I, I have a lot of Marky-isms. Uh, <laughs> stay and have conversation. Uh, and so I'm definitely going to maybe do an incentive and bring in that live streaming video. So, so what are those your three things? Oh, the, the find the cause, local business, and why they should care? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I was so, going to say, um, with, I mean, with that, I don't know. I lost it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 look, it happens. And look, here, here let this, and, and you know what? Usually I could cut this out. We're not going to cut this out, but we keep no. going, right? Yeah, we, have, we have blunders all the time, but we keep going because we realize, one, we're human, and then we want to be authentic, and we also want to be transparent. Is there a certain time of the day that you go live, or do you just capture the opportunity when it exists? I'm not much of a planner. I mean, I, I plan things that have to be planned, but... I, I go live when the moment hits me. You know, some of the things it's going to be like you have to, if, if I'm at the local 4th of July celebration for my town, I have to do it then and there. I can't go July 5th and go, hey, everybody, yesterday we had a great 4th of July fireworks here. It was fantastic. Wish you were here, right? You got to go live in, in, during the moment. But if, it's a, if it is a business owner, I would ask them, when is the best time? You know, like the coffee shop, she's like, you, anytime you come, it's going to be pretty busy, you know, but I, I've done restaurants and stuff. So they'll tell me, okay, our slow time is this. That's when I set, set the time. I don't necessarily, obviously you can go into your insights on any of the social media platforms, see when the peak times your audience is on, but most of your views are going to happen on the playback anyways, right? If, if, you're, if your content is good, and, and you, you know, you have high energy and people are hooked from the beginning, you're going to get that engagement and the algorithm's just going to push it out to your people anyways, right? If the content is good, you shouldn't worry about the time, you know, that, that, that you're posting. Don't get, don't overthink it. Stop thinking, start doing is always what I say. Like, you know, you always, what do you, you say? You got to get ready to get ready. Trying Stop get getting ready. ready to get ready to do video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, tell me yours again. <laughs> Stop thinking, start doing. Stop thinking, start doing. Ooh, thinking, won't it get in your way? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because it's, it's and it, we see them in class all the time. They're like, well, you know, I was, I was thinking, I was thinking, what is the best time for my followers? And what is the right equipment that I should have? And, and should it be a sunny day or a cloudy? 
just do it. Like, stop thinking, start doing. Take your phone out, hit the button, and just go. I'm like, I don't know what to say. You talk to clients every single day. You don't practice that, right? No. <laughs> Look, I can tell you they're not practicing those scripts, okay? They, they doing it dead off the cuff. Look, we give them a million and one scripts, and they still won't practice a script, right? right. So, no, they're doing it off the cuff. You know what? That actually... We should start asking them, how many of you practice scripts? But you still go out on listing appointments, you take buyers out every single day. That's the same way to treat video because we know the people who do scripts, they let you know. They tell you how they do their scripts and they can do their scripts, you know, off the cuff. But the mass majority don't. That's the same way we need to treat videos. Now, I know that um, you're always ahead of the curve, uh, bringing in new technology and innovation. And I have a question to ask you. Uh, last mm -hmm. time we saw one another, we were, were we in Minnesota? No, we've seen each other quite a few times this spring. Yeah. So it was a good spring. Last um, time was Minnesota. It was Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. And you were working with chatbots. How are bots treating your business? And, and do you want to tell people what a, a chat bot is in case they don't know? Sure. Yeah, so I've been working a lot with chat bots, Facebook. You know, you have two different, you have your Facebook Messenger. And if you don't know, Facebook purchased WhatsApp for, I think it was a billion dollars, however long ago. And that's when you saw the progression of their Messenger platform. They took a lot of the, what WhatsApp was doing, and they did it with Messenger. And now it's its own separate entity, if you will, where you can follow me on Messenger and we don't have to be friends on Facebook, same thing with your business messenger, okay? Because you have your business and your personal. It's two different messaging platforms. You don't, a lot of people don't realize that because I message you and you never, never reply. You don't even know how to check those, right? And so it's so powerful because in the age of permission-based marketing, right? Meaning like, hey, I'm going to put out content about real estate. Do you want to know about it? Yes or no? Yes. Now you have somebody that's dialed in. Now you have somebody that you can target with specific content that they care about. Not somebody you're paying an ad to get your, your, you know, your message in front of their face. That's still, ad, it's still spam in my opinion because you're forcing them to watch what you tell them to watch. And so it, it's, it's more about quality than quantity because it's permission-based. I'd rather have you know, two people who want to get a message from me when I go live than 2,000 followers on my page, a bunch of people that I just went, will you like me, will you like, will you like, will you like, and they're obligated or they're reciprocating because I like their page. Those aren't real followers. Like you wanna have the raving fans, people that really care about you, your business, your clients that you took care of, that you exceeded their expectations. Those are the ones that you can get to this messenger bot and now you can answer questions for them anytime, 24 seven. Like it's, it's an auto reply, but not, you don't wanna make it so automated that you lose the personal touch either. So there is a delicate balance. Are you enjoying having a bot? I am. At first, uh, I, I went a little too automated in the beginning. And, you know, when you're on the edge, you it's a guess and check method because there really isn't, you know, when, you, when you're an early adapter, you know, Mark, you're like, let me try this. And you're like, oh, man, that was not good. I didn't do it right. But now I know. And you can teach other people. And initially for me, it was like I went too automated. So it was like, boom, 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 boom. People were getting all these messages. And then I actually sent out like an uh, apology video. I was like, through the messenger bot, I was like, listen, guys, I'm, I'm sorry. This isn't me. I feel like this is too robotic. And you're going to get less communication from me, but only what you want. So please, and I sent like a little bit of like a survey because I said, okay, if you want to hear about my, my, my uh, millennial who talks uh, show that I have, click here. Boom. Now they're tagged to for that. If you want to know about our ed talks, they're tagged for that. If you want to know when we upload a YouTube video, tagged for that. So now they're only getting exactly what they want. And I think that's the key. That's the future. You know, it's not these landing pages, not these sales funnels. It's still so salesy, if that's a word, or spammy. Like, you, it's about relationships. And the more that you can give people exactly what they want, like, that's the key. I don't have to hey, what's your email? Because I have their messenger. Everybody's on Facebook. So, right, I have a 96% open rate on those messenger bots as opposed to my 23% open rate via email. So why would I even send people an email? 
Yeah, you know, so I'm thinking about a bot. I didn't realize, um, I guess, the initial upfront cost and maintenance of one. Uh, and so I, I think I'm going to go to the Manny Chat, Mini Chat, at, what kind Manny of Chat. Yeah, uh, conference Manny Chat, yeah. To, to learn more because it's in its infancy state. And I realize how important it's going to be. But what I love is the fact that you said these people all came in the same way. And you realized that they were getting too much information so you took that list and you segmented it and even though you do all this different video content each of these different segments and I think you mentioned three can now receive information specific to what their needs and their wants are and then you could take those three segments and you could eventually uh, take it and segment it even more and a lot of people just aren't willing to make the investment but think about how long we have to incubate these leads in real estate. So I, I guess what I'm coming back to is the fact that you could start with a video. Mm -hmm. People could comment on that video. They could end up in your chat bot and then you could segment the conversation. Yeah. So let me give you an example. If I was, I recently did a live stream with a company called NACA. They're a not-for-profit. They're, they're nationwide. I'm sure you've heard of them as lowest interest rate ever. You can buy down yeah. to uh, zero percent, can't, or is it one percent? Yeah. The lowest interest Point, rate. Uh, our local one had 0. 0.625, 0. 0.06 to 0. 0.6, less than one percent. Yeah, 0. 0.0625. <laughs> yeah, 0. 0.0625, I think it was. And so it, it's a great program, and, and so many people were like, Oh, I, I don't know, it seems too good to be true. And I even said it when I first heard about it, you know, we're skeptics. As, as realtors sometimes, like, I don't believe it. You got to show me. And so I did a live stream on it. But with the chat bot, you can also have keywords in your, in your comments of any post. So when you hear, you know, this used to be like, hey, send a text to 5134, whatever you're, you know, when you used to do that, or people still do that. I can say, hey, if you're watching this right now, if you comment NACA in the comments below, we will automatically send you a one sheet. Again, it's all about being know, a resource for our clients. I'm going to send you one sheet on the program on, on the next dates so you can get registered for it and how, and what the, you know, the HUD median income to see if you qualify, you know, just nothing sales related. Here's the resources. Here's what I'm providing because I want to help you because I care. Maybe you'll use me for real estate. Maybe not. I don't care, but you didn't hear about NACA until you heard it from me. Right. And so it's, it's, it goes back to still, showing people that I care. I'm going to give, 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 give until it hurts. And then I'm going to give a little bit more so that the clients see that they see us as a resource. Then there's no conversion, right? They, they're already subscribed to everything you're talking about. And I'm like, Jay, I want to buy a house. I mean, I did NACA or I did the first home club or I did whatever it is, whatever content you're creating. But when they comment on that live stream, now they're tagged as first time home buyer or, um, you know, interested in, in grant programs. Now I can follow up. Hey, here's another city grant that's being offered. Here's another county one that's being offered. Here's, you know, just again, segmenting them. If you did something for sellers, same thing. Um, I'm thinking of doing a, a for sale by owner live stream soon. Um, how, to, how to survive as a for sale by owner or something like that because our market's so hot. Well, they're going to do it anyways, right? And, and we want to be their friends when they finally figure out like, oh wait, you guys just don't put a sign in the yard. I had no idea. I mean, you have to take all these phone calls. You gotta you know, figure out who's who, figure out who's pre-qualified. That's just to get the offer. Once you get the offer, then you have to evaluate. Even in a seller's market, you get 15 offers. Tell me how you are gonna evaluate that as a first time home seller. I'm gonna go. You need a spreadsheet. You need a spreadsheet. Yeah. You know what I'm thinking? Um, I've been telling uh, agents that in Google Forms, they can actually create a highest and best offer with all of the different points that they want to let it populate that spreadsheet when they come back for the highest and best to sit down and present it in an Excel spreadsheet format. So if this occurs, then this is what happens. And do you teach uh, the ABR? I do. Okay, so it's in the ABR and I think the SRS course, we have that spreadsheet. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes even as agents, we have to sit there and really ponder, well, one, what does this client want? And then sometimes these offers are really, really close. And one thing that I've yeah. done in the past, I often will go, when I'm getting down to that, it's like splitting a hair, I'll go and look at that agent and what their close ratios are 
because I need an agent who thinks outside the box in case we have a problem. And right. truth be told, we are all new to this business, but you understand problem solving as a result of doing in this world. So I need someone who's a seasoned, closed professional who's had right. to navigate some choppy waters to, on the other side to make sure we get this deal to the closing table. So it's just going back and taking a look, you know, at those numbers. I love the NACA program. I wasn't a believer either uh, here in Illinois. And uh, they made me a believer. I had quite a few right. clients who close. And guess what? Totally forgot that they even existed. But now you can go into the down payment assistance, first time home buyers. Are your recent college grad? Graduate. And so, but all of this is originating with video. Right. right. So you, you said you're not a planner, but how often do you like to go live? Every day. You Actually, go live every, every day. Every, every day. day. <laughs> hustling, hustling. Um, at least, yeah, at least, at least once a day on, on one platform and not necessarily all the platforms once a day. But I could tell you if there's a day I'm like, you know what, man, I didn't go live today. Boom, I'm going to take my phone out and it's going to be at least IG live at the very least, um, you know, to get something I might talk. You know, sometimes I have ideas in my head that I test on IG Instagram first to see what the response is like because it's a smaller, more, I feel like more personal platform. It's not as big of an audience, if you will, as Facebook uh, for me anyways. And so if, depending on how people are, 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 engaging with that, then I will then go to Facebook and maybe do a follow up, something more in depth, more planned out. Uh, but at least every day, you know, it's, it's, it's a skill that you have to practice. We all start somewhere, right? Focus on progress, not perfection. You know, the first live stream I did, I was like, uh, mm, uh, good morning. Uh, Jeremiah's here, you know, and just as you do more of it, you know, and, and, my operations manager here, Amy, she's like, man, you and Mark, you're just pros. 10 minutes before you guys are like ready to go. And it's like, we're, I mean, you do enough of it. You know, the things that are going to happen, you know, the problems that'll come up, you know, you're going to have a time where you go, Oh, I don't know what I'm going to say. You just keep going. You just, just keep, keep going. going. And let me say this. Um, I think we're pretty good. We're almost like one take wonders. Uh, I know that people think that we practice and have these elaborate plans, but trans once again, transparency, what you see is what you get. And so we're operating off the cuff. And I know that we did a video. We were at celebration totally off the cuff. Yeah, and I love that video. So happened, we were able to repurpose that video for Minnesota, right? Or when we were walking into David Knox studio, we didn't have any idea he was going, they were going to film us, right? Totally off the cuff. And so we've had all these video moments together and, and the off the cuff ones are great. But let me say this. Last week, we had Dr. E.T. Eric Thomas here. And oh, yeah. we wanted to know what was that defining moment for him. And actually, it was a video with uh, Floyd Mayweather. And he said that he's never been able, because it was off the cuff, he said that is the coldest, most defining video of his life, and he's never been able to duplicate it. And so sometimes your greatest moment is going to come from being off the cuff. What's in your, what's in your arsenal? What's, what's in your tool bag? My toolkit. So starting with lighting. Lighting. Woo. All right, I got it. Got a little ring light, but if, if you send a message to my, and, and we'll give you the Facebook page at the end, you send a message, the word equipment to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash jmanspeaks, it will reply back automatically with my recommended equipment list with links to where you can get it and how much it costs. Uh, but I mean, very basic. I just have my phone. I have a ring light, if you will, a small one and um, like a, one that fits. This is one that I'm giving away. One that fits right over the phone. <laughs> like five bucks you got the same thing right and i got a larger one for when i'm in the office um and then just just audio is is so important like you could hear how crisp marky's voice sounds right now uh or she's got top-notch audio equipment i'm using airpods right now so that regardless of where like i'm using it on my mac but if i was using it with my phone it'd be the same thing somebody else could hold the phone and i could have the airpods and it's wireless it's perfect uh but or a hardwired lavalier um, my microphone would also work well. I have that as a backup because I'm the guy that sometimes my stuff isn't charged when I want to use it. 
So I always I believe in redundancy because worse things will happen and you never want to lose the opportunity to do that video because your equipment's not ready. Wow. That's, uh, I, I love it. And I carry a lavalier with me at all times. I'm carrying headsets. Uh, I think we both carry backpacks, which is what I, is just like a part of who we are. Uh, so right. we can have all our equipment ready to go. So I know that you and I, we spend a lot of time away from home in the fall and in the spring and that you are a dynamic speaker. If someone wanted to connect with you, hire you, what are the products and services and how do they connect with J-Man? Uh, the website would probably be the best way, jmanseminars.com. I spent a lot, of, a lot of time redoing that website this year. So it has all of my current sessions on there. You can connect with all my social media platforms on there as well. Um, but my niche or niche, what did you call it in the beginning? The niches? The niche? niche. I call it niche, but I'm realizing people younger than me are calling it niche. You know, niche I, sounds I sexy. Like, so, I, like, I like niche. I'm sticking like, with niche. Oh, wait, wait. I like, <laughs> totally like niche. Oh, you hold totally on. like niche? <laughs> you I know I'm cracking up laughing. Uh, I just got to, you know, because we were talking <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this yet, but look at this lady. You see her right here? What? Woo! Brand new Realtor Magazine. You guys got to get that. So, so, but, so what's your niche, J-Man, I mean, in the world of speaking? So, so my niche is technology, video, social media, but, you know, and, and, and shout out to, you know, some of my mentors who had told me in the beginning, my Carol Murray is one of them. You know, she, she could just, sit there, absorb, and then just drop a nugget on me that will change my entire career. Like, you need to do this. Take the tie off, right? Because I used to wear a tie all the time. She's like, you don't look – I hate it. I hated it. It's like, take the tie off. Do this. So she said to me one day, she's like, do you want to be known as just a technology speaker? And it hit me like what I do is so much more than that, right? Like, I help people overcome their fears. I help people take technology – and implement it into their business. So I'm more of a motivator for technology than I am just anybody could come and give you a list of here's how you live stream. Here's your, your blueprint. But I feel like my strengths come from helping people overcome those fears. If you've been in my classes, like, yo, take your phone out from New York, right? Take your phone out. Uh, take it out. Right. <laughs> take it out. Okay. I'll take it out. Please, sir. Don't get mad. And, and like, and get it done because then once, you know, it's, it's inspiring through action rather than here's your theory, go ahead, go home and do it. And we know that if you, you allow them to do that, then they're just going to go home. Those notes are going to sit on the shelf with the rest of the notes from the last seminar that they went to that they really thought was great, but, but they didn't take action. So for me, I teach technology, but more so I help others overcome their fears and just change their life. In the end, I want to be able to, to help you embrace social media and video because it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. No, so just do it. <laughs> you know, what's funny uh, at NAR legislative, I was sitting next to Betts and I know that we both work with speakers bureau. And so uh, I had just completed a session and it was, it, let me be honest with you. My session was dynamite, but a lady from a local realtor association, she came, she stood right there. Cause she know what I speak about. And she yeah. says, she looks at Bet. She was like, I need a millennial speaker. And the first person comes to my mind is you, right? And she steps down. She says, well, I have this young guy, da 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 And she rattles off your sessions and what sessions she think would be great. And I'm like, oh, you, 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 you got an intimate relationship, right? And I said, I said, J-Man? And she says, yeah, how did you know? I said, because that's the first person who came to mind. And so being, having yourself in a niche, even though I'm sitting there, right, and it's easy for you to pitch yourself, right? Uh, well, uh, let, let me put a spin on it. But no, she wanted a millennial speaker. That means she's probably having a YPN or want to teach older realtors how to connect and embrace with the largest consumer generation ever. But mm -hmm. you came to mind, not only for me, but for your speakers bureau who intimately knew exactly what subjects would fit her program. I don't know. I never yeah. told you that, but I was sitting there and I looked, I said, girl, you know, the, I mean, and she sold it. 
it's just sitting there in the hallway. Uh, and so you do want to, you want to uh, definitely own your niche and, and you will tell people in a minute, pull it out. Well, I mean, you tell me that, right? Let's do this right now. What we got to think about. <laughs> yeah, Come that, on now, off, let's go. The Wait. off the cuff video, you were like, Jay, man, well, well, what are we going to do? What are we Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. Wait. I'm going to say your favorite thing because you stay ready. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was born ready, girl. Let's go. Born ready. Uh, and yeah. so I want you to connect with my boy, J-Man. You can go to his website. You can actually interact with his chat bot. Uh, he's going to give you information that is going to help you in your business. J-Man, it's always a blast to spend time with you, uh, like-minded folks. Uh, and you bring out the best in me because you make me, because sometimes I take another second. You told me this morning, look, I had my little comb here and I was sitting here doing this. You was like, look, uh, your hair is ready to go. Let's do this, right? <laughs> uh, and so I had to put the comb down, but I appreciate your time and your energy. Thank you. I appreciate you, Murphy. Thank you so much. Woo! <laughs> See you guys later.